Hey guys, welcome to the 10th math major example video following our course on number theory. Today's video is going to be on Wilson's theorem, and we're going to do a few examples and then a couple of proofs. It's going to be rather short. If you haven't already, you should watch our course lecture video on Wilson's theorem, which I'll link in the card above. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So for these first four examples here, we're going to be simplifying using, using Wilson's theorem. Since we're going to be using it all video, we should probably state what Wilson's theorem is. Wilson's theorem says that p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. So starting off with number 1, we can see that's going to be a direct application of Wilson's theorem as we have the setup that we want here. We have 88 factorial and we're trying to reduce that mod 89. So by Wilson's theorem, we can directly apply it and we'll get negative 1 mod 89, which is of course equal to 88. So a quick corollary to Wilson's theorem, or some people just write Wilson's theorem this way, is that p minus 2 factorial is congruent to 1 mod p. So that's going to be very applicable to our second example here where we have 21 factorial and we want to reduce that mod 23. So obviously by this corollary we will have that 21 factorial is congruent to 1 mod 23. Now for where Number three, we have 64 factorial mod 67, and we're not going to be able to is easily apply Wilson's theorem to this example. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set equal, we're going to set x equal to uh, 64 factorial. Then we're going to set the, up this modular congruence where we have x is congruent to 64 factorial mod 67. We're going to multiply both sides of this congruence by 65, which will allow us to uh, apply this corollary that I've written above. So we will have 65x uh, is congruent to 1 mod 67. All that's left here is to find the inverse of 65, which you can do using the extended Euclidean algorithm, or you can just use a calculator to find it. And you will find that the inverse of 65 is 33. So we will have that x is congruent to 33 mod 67, and that finishes this problem off. Now for number four, we're also gonna have to use some tricks here. So first we're going to cancel out our factorial in the denominator there and rewrite our numerator as the product of 23 all the way up to 31. We can reduce each of those mod 11 to get one times two all the way up to eight, which we can write as eight factorial. Now, just like before, we're going to set x equal to 8 factorial and multiply both sides by 9 so that we can apply Wilson's theorem to this, and we will get that 9 is, 9x nine is congruent to 1 mod 11, and the inverse of 9 mod 11 is 5, so x is congruent to 5 mod 11, and that will finish this one off. So our next problem is a proof involving Wilson's theorem. We want to prove that if p is an odd prime, that 2 times p minus 3 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. So we're going to get to this result by direct proof, and we're going to start with Wilson's theorem, which is stated as p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. Now, by extracting the last two terms in this factorial, we can rewrite uh, p minus 1 factorial as p minus 3 factorial times p minus 2 times p minus 1 is congruent to negative 1 mod p. Now we're going to multiply p minus 2 and p minus 1 out to get p squared minus 3p plus 2. Um, and that's of course times p minus 3 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. Now we can pretty easily see that that polynomial is going to be congruent to 2 mod p as p squared mod p is obviously 0 and negative 3 p is also 0 mod p. So we will have that that whole polynomial there is congruent to 2 mod p, which means we can rewrite it in our original product as 2 which gives us the result that we want. We have that p minus 3 factorial times 2 is congruent to negative 1 mod p. And with that out of the way, let's get into our third and last example. So our third example says, let p be a prime and show that the numerator of 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third all the way up to 1 over p minus 1 is divisible by p. Now in order to do this, we're going to have to rewrite our sum a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to rearrange our sum so that we have going left from right, we have the first and last term, the second and second to last term, etc., all the way until the middle terms there. Now I'm going to show you why this is really good for us down here. You can see that we can write 1 as p minus 1 over p minus 1 so that we can combine like terms with our 1 over p minus 1, which allows us to write p over p minus 1. And we can do this kind of thing similarly on all of our terms so that we have a sum that collapses to something with p in the numerator. And that's all that we need to do is show that the numerator is divisible by p in this sum. So we're done. And that's a good place to stop.